A very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for your time and for joining. I can see that we have people joining us from Africa, US, across the Europe. So yes, thank you very much for taking the time out. I'm so happy uh, to be part of, uh, of the session because I know it's a very much hot topic in the industry that we are in. Uh, my name is Vincent. I'll be the moderator during the session, whereas I'm joining here along with my colleague, uh, Davidus, who is the product manager, manager at Ruptella, and one of our most valued and privileged partner, Rizwan, the CEO from CarboTrack in Hungary. Um, we are just eight working days away from Christmas, so it's a pretty exciting time for here. And I'm, I'm reporting from Lithuania, where we have a snowstorm right now. But yes, we will try to be very uh, casual, very easygoing, so that we don't spoil our festivity moods. We have got some super exciting topics, as I mentioned earlier, just to quickly give you a brief on, which is one of the hot topics that is going on, 2G Sunset, and what it means for the tra transport industry. Or 4G devices, how different technology oh, can be. Also, how a Ruptel and Cargo Track partnership and what it leads us to a successful uh, collaboration. But yes, of course, I'll keep it quiet. We will go with the flow and see uh, where it leads us to. Um, just, just to let you know as well, we have a whole team here monitoring. So please feel, feel free to drop any questions, any messages that you would like to, and we will try to answer those uh, during the session or uh, just after that, um, depending on how the time is. Um, but first of all, I would like to take the opportunity and kickstart the session and wanted to give you a quick overview of uh, Rotella, what we are. Um, so we have been in the market for approximately 15 years now and have a team based across the globe. But mainly the offices are based in Mexico, Far East Asia, Mid uh, Middle East, and, and of course our headquarters are based in, uh, in the Europe, Lithuania. Um, with manufacturing unit as well. So everything is followed by the European standards, giving you the assurance um, of the rules and regulation as well as the quality. Um, also, personally, I love working over here because the core business value, which is the innovation, uh, which means that but not limiting us to, to certain products or certain devices, but of course, offering and working together with our partners to make them successful eventually yeah, us successful. secondly is care by offering undisputed care and, and friendship to our to our partners as well from day one any kind of support that is required and lastly which is very competitive and courage which gives us to be more competitive in this disrupting market that we live in uh, due to care, uh, due to sheer care and attention to details, uh, we are very lucky to have a success rate of our devices for around 99.9 percent, which is uh, which is incredible. That means that we have partners using our devices for more than 15, uh, 14 years, and they are still on the go, um, which causes, of course, the lower uh, lower failure rate. Secondly, uh, comparing to last year, we have produced uh, over 330,000 devices and roughly around 1,800,000, which are currently installed and working with our partners. But without further ado, I would love to uh, share further information and I would like to pass on the fort to my colleague, uh, partner, uh, Rizban. Over to you, Rizban. Thank you, Vincent. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Rezvan uh, Pertikash. I'm the CEO of CargoTrek. Uh, the company was founded uh, 10 years ago in 2012. And since then, we developed different solutions uh, mainly for uh, transport companies um, as GPS tracking, automated tool payment, and uh, legal and financial solutions. Uh, with the help of uh, Ruptela as a hardware uh, and a software provider, we, we become to be, as uh, by revenue, uh, in top five companies in Romania providing telematic solutions. Uh, and I confirm what, what uh, Vincent said uh, regarding the 99.9 uh, quality um, uh, SLA as hardware, as the first device installed in, 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 um, uh, from Ruptela is still working. But we will need to change it because of the 2G sunset. <laughs> that's that's. Uh, but it's very important that it's still working for 10 years now and working fine. 
So our main goal uh, in cargo track is to optimize fleet management um, with GPS tracking and to develop personalized solutions for our clients. Uh, we are doing this with a team of 45 colleagues uh, dedicated in providing high quality services. Uh, we are focused mainly in, on Romanian, uh, Moldavian and newly Egyptian market, but we have clients all over Europe. Uh, so roughly this is, uh, this is something about us, but if you want to find out more, you can follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, meanwhile, during the presentation, I encourage you to write questions and uh, or provide feedback in the chat that, as Vince had said, we replied uh, in the end of the webinar. Thank you. So moving on to the first topic, which is quite interesting, you know, the new techno technological uh, mishaps. Um, so this question is essentially for my colleague, uh, David Is what it means uh, the sunset of 2G to the transport industry according to you, David? Yes, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so yeah, what it means, uh, of course it means a lot uh, because 2G sunset is coming and it's, it, you, you can never hide from it, you know. Uh, I have basically maybe in my mind three dates for it when it will affect industry more and more. So it's three dates, 2023, we're already part of, let's say most of the Europe operators are planning to start shutting down the 2G network. Then 2025, by 2025 is uh, most part of the world uh, actually planning to shut down already 2G. And by 2028, uh, already most of the 2G network just will be dead. So of course it will uh, impact the industry a lot because uh, most of the uh, devices now still 2 and 3G, they're working in the transport industry in, in this whole generation network so of course all those devices will need to be changed to 4g so of course it will affect a lot of the industry most importantly uh david i would love to to know um you know how this effect will gonna change the the gps fleet tracking systems yeah so uh, as I mentioned, uh, it, it will change, but uh, if the clients will be ready and will follow up all the trends and news uh, from Rotella side as well. So if you'll be ready, actually will not feel that much difference except of the changing of the device. So now we have this slide, maybe just a brief uh, introduction and comparison of, of, of networks and what are usually used for, for the tracking. So of course 2G uh, 3G, so you, you know this is all generation network. And uh, now it's also coming 5G, but 5G is in very, very early stage yet. Um, so uh, that is why 2G will be shut down anyway, because there will be uh, needed some free bandwidth for the 5G, which is just starting to go up. So the more 5G will come up, uh, the less 2G will be available. Yeah, but uh, more or less from 4G now is the actually two most popular uh, versions of the, of the network. Uh, usually our clients and all the devices manufacturing are using either CAT M1 with narrowband IoT connection or CAT1 connection. Uh, so basically the main difference is from it that uh, CAT M1 uh, is a low power 4G network uh, used for various uh, IoT applications, so Internet of Things applications, so trackers, let's say some uh, counters and so on. Uh, narrowband uh, specifically is used for uh, uh, optimized for non-moving IoT objects uh, because it has low bandwidth. And uh, of course, the CAT1 is a high power 4G network uh, with uh, very, very good uh, network coverage, uh, basically similar to our phones. If, if you have 4G on your phone, you will have it also on our device. Uh, meanwhile, CAT M1, if we compare, it's still uh, also running, uh, running up. Uh, it's actually the most popular, of course, in USA. Uh, but in Europe also, it's uh, getting higher and higher, just running faster and faster. So it also come into the uh, into the um, range of, uh, of of the networks. Yes, yeah, yeah, so so these are the, the, main, the main differences and uh, and things that I wanted to mention. Okay, no, that's that's amazing. But yes, I have another interesting question, which is uh, essentially highlights to to Razvan because you know we are on the other side, but uh, understanding his perspective of how it can affect 
um, your business to have the 2G uh, moving from the, having 2G devices moving to the another uh, 4G? Um, yeah, it depends the approach you have here because from from cargo tax uh, um, point of view, we are preparing for this for 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 a few years now, uh, and as we are a client oriented company, uh, we decided a long time ago not to purchase uh, purchase the the two G devices and go for the four G devices covered from our margin this difference uh, in price and we basically prepared our clients for the move so currently um, cargo track has less than 500 devices that are still in 2g so directly regarding this point of view i don't think it would be a problem uh, on the other side uh, regarding the mnos uh, mobile network operators i think we will face some uh, some some problems that are not so obvious because when you are building a new network some some problems will appear uh, already started to appear because uh, different kind of uh, different countries in europe started to stop the, the 2g and uh, we see some problems in connectivity but uh, we are monitoring very careful what's happening and what we did uh, is to build us an, a notification system in which we can see every downtime of each of uh, each of the devices we're manually analyzing everything that's possible to analyze regarding the, the connectivity of the device and here we we have a good opportunity because we can take uh, logs over the air from from the devices and it helps us a lot in in in, in uh, finding the real problem discussing with uh, with uh, rotella specialists uh, and our mno uh, our internet service provider and finding the best solution a few a few weeks ago we ended a very important uh, reconfiguration of our devices more than 10,000 devices because we found a problem in a in a network and um, we we managed to to speed up the process and the client didn't felt any any problem with the with the gps tracking devices but indeed uh, I'm, I'm expecting to have uh, to have problems like this in connection between devices between MNOs because 2G network and 3G network was a stable one uh, that worked for several years and now we are coming with new type of connections and uh, there will be problems. The only thing that we can do is to react very quickly to, to, the, to, the, to the changes on, on the network side and to monitor very carefully everything that's that's happening i think that's the only thing that we can we can do as service providers okay, uh, yes. okay. so my um, actually another question the last one uh, because i'm really curious to, about this uh, this topic so um is it, this is to, for david is uh, david this, what do you think about the future of iot connectivity now moving into the market especially, especially in our industry yeah, so uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, from the Saudi side, uh, already it will, it's already still starting a bit in early stage in USA and other regions, it's already in quite a high runner stage, we can say. Um, but still in Europe, it's quite early, you know, especially IoT connectivity, mostly it has coverage in uh, main cities, but not uh, global. Like if we compare to, for example, Cat1 connectivity. So yeah, I think it's still in early state, but it's going high and basically uh, rocketing high. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm sure that it will be very popular within a few next few years. Um, thank you for that, uh, for both of you for sharing this knowledge. Um, so I think so maybe we can move on to our next slide, which is just elaborating more about our devices that we, we have got in our stock and our future plans as well. Then definitely we can move on to more interesting things ahead. Yeah. Over to you, David. You. Uh, yeah, so uh, just uh, briefly, I want to introduce already some 4G devices that we as Rutella have to offer. Uh, we are moving not straight from uh, 2G to 4G, and that's it. So we're having some devices now that are in the middle. What it means that they works on both 2G and 4G network. Devices are switching automatically. If there is 2G network, they're working on 2G. If there is 4G, they're working on, two, on 4G. 
Uh, yeah, so basically a few of our high runner devices uh, that uh, you can use for your uh, everyday cases, which is starting from simple ones to most advanced ones. Uh, so I'll start just from our Trace 5 device, which you can see here on the right. Um, this is our eco family device, uh, as I mentioned, 4 and 2G uh, network uh, is available. Uh, it, it, it used more for a basic application, basic use cases, uh, because it has uh, two digital outputs, uh, four digital inputs, uh, uh, two analog inputs, one wire interface. So more or less for those uh, everyday applications like track and trace, uh, driver registration, fuel monitoring, uh, trailers tracking, because uh, we have a version of the Trace 5 device with big battery that can last for uh, more than one month. Just uh, device can last on the battery itself. Uh, so it's uh, very good for trailer tracking. Uh, yeah, service free fleets, uh, just of course, uh, Green Fleet or our EcoDrive solution is very popular with this device that we're using. So just uh, also driver behavior monitoring. Uh, as well, this device, uh, the uh, LTE version, so this CAT1 versions, they are coming, lot, uh, coming up with Bluetooth connections. Uh, so it saves also money for the businesses uh, because you can use wireless accessories so you can uh, uh, do the installations much faster uh, with this device uh, if we compare to some old uh, generation devices that we had uh, before. Yeah, so basically this Trace 5 is for just uh, more of a, uh, simple use cases. Uh, also, what I mentioned, it has IP67 protection as well, the housing uh, version. So if you're installing it somewhere in har harsh conditions, maybe outside of the trailer, outside of the truck, maybe an engine compartment, so this IP67 version is, uh, will suit you very well. Moving further, we have uh, already two devices from our uh, advanced family. Uh, so one of them is LCV5 light device. Uh, this device is advanced family device, which has more inputs, more outputs. Uh, it has advanced uh, interfaces, like of course, canvas reading, uh, which is uh, one of the most important things in light uh, commercial vehicles uh, business. Also uh, serial interfaces uh, and so on, just to connect some more advanced accessories and uh, use some more advanced solutions. Uh, what is new with uh, this LCV5 light that we actually launched recently, uh, we remade uh, all the um, vehicle platform, the vehicle tracking, uh, not tracking, but um, documentation platform. Um, it's now very easy to use. You can just uh, get the device, uh, find your vehicle model and make on the platform and you will see all the installation instructions there, uh, where to connect, how to do it and so on, how to configure the device. Uh, it's very easy to use if you're using our uh, splitter harness connection. We have a unified splitter harness which uh, fits uh, any vehicle model that you have. Uh, so it means uh, that you can use only one harness for any vehicle, no matter is it, uh, let's say, know, Chevrolet from uh, USA or just some local VAG vehicles like Volkswagen or, or, or Audi. Uh, you can use one harness and to connect any vehicle to it and device will find the correct connections from the OBD socket itself. It will configure itself and basically just simple installations like five minutes I, I tried it of course myself <laughs> on my vehicle personally uh, it took me like about five minutes to install the device physically and that's it device configures itself automatically and reading uh, all the needed uh, obd and uh, light uh, lcv canvas data so a lot of parameters there as i mentioned in this new documentation platform you can see uh, what parameters you can read from or what vehicles and so on. So very detailed uh, solution that we have. Also, uh, we have uh, installation wizard, which also is a step-by-step -step detailed instruction with pictures, uh, how to uh, connect device, how to configure it, uh, how to connect this harness if you're using it and so on. Yeah, so this uh, LCV light is used uh, for uh, more or less light commercial vehicle business here. And uh, of course, uh, our the, the the most advanced device is HCV5 Lite. So it has uh, similar features uh, as LCV5, but in addition, it can of course read heavy commercial vehicle canvas data. So all the parameters uh, like fuel level, mileage, fuel consumption, all, all the other parameters that you need, uh, uh, it's reading out. And of course, one of the most popular solution that uh, it's mandatory for most of the logistics company in, in, in uh, EU. It's of course the tachograph data reading. So this device is also fully capable to remotely download the tachograph files. And uh, even by using uh, uh, software, you can forward them uh, via email to already government institutions and, and so on. Yeah, 
So maybe more or less that's it about these devices. I will not get into too much details about them. I uh, just want to mention one more that is coming soon. So this is our plug five. At the moment, we have still a fourth generation plug four device, which is 2G. And as I mentioned, we want to jump to 4G. So at first we're releasing it to the US market. Uh, so this device will be a uh, new generation 4G device. We will have two versions, one with CAT4 generation network, which will have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So we will be able to uh, do a hotspot uh, in the vehicle if needed. Uh, the, the manufacturing uh, itself of the device is uh, uh, quite easy, I would say, and installation is simple. The form factor is very small, you just plug and play, that's it. Uh, one of the main uh, advantages also of this small form factor device is uh, that he will be able also to read all the advanced OBD uh, data from the light commercial vehicles. So this is also a very big jump from our previous Plug 4 generation devices. Yeah, yeah so more you, that's, it. that's it from my side. Thank you, David. That's, uh, th by the time when you were explaining about the devices and everything, I had a question uh, for actually uh, Razvan. Um, so, Razvan, as you see, the market is actually transitioning now from 2G to 4G now. Are there any challenges that you're facing, how the market behavior is, how they are actually responding to this change? It's a normal, it's a normal progress uh, of the market. Indeed, it's a problem of, of uh, if you are talking about competition, uh, uh, the end customer doesn't is not so well informed in 2G and 4G. And you will find out on the market that there are different uh, different offers from, from different companies that can that then go with uh, very small prices, but they are using 2G yeah. devices. Uh, strange enough, they are using 2G devices in a country in which is planned to shut down 2G yeah. next year. Uh, yes, that's a reaction to, <laughs> we'll see the reaction on the, on the market the next years when those devices won't work anymore. And uh, uh, the problem is end user is not, is not informed enough. Um, if you are going for the 4G mm -hmm. devices, indeed they're more yes. expensive. Uh, you, want, you, you need to cover somehow that, that margin if you don't want to increase the, the prices. And uh, there is, we are making big efforts to, to, to make our clients understand that uh, now it's a, it's, a, it's a migration period in which you need to be very careful of the of the devices that you are choosing. Um, indeed, in some countries, uh, because it needs to be very well mm -hmm. analyzed. In some countries, there will be the the three G uh, network which uh, will be shut down, as in Romania. So the four G devices uh, Rutella has, which have fallback in two G, uh, or even if you go with two G, will work perfectly. Uh, so you need to understand as a as a uh, user of the device, if your device won't leave yeah. Romania, you are not expected to leave Romania, then you can go further with 2G devices. You need to be very careful of, of what you are using the device mm -hmm. for uh, and uh, be very, very well trained to understand this, this, these changes. Because uh, these changes go mm -hmm. naturally. It happened all the time. From We will, we will pass from 4G to 5G to another yeah. G, <laughs> many uh, but it will happen in time. We need uh -huh. to understand that the approach, how we are doing this, this, this migration from one right. to another, uh, if we are very well informed, it will be easier for us. If not easier, hopefully cheaper, <laughs> because yes. if you are doing, uh, if you are making the wrong decision, definitely will be uh, very costly. More competitive. I agree with you. So actually, now, as you mentioned about the G's going on over here, um, I would like to ask another question uh, before moving on to another topic from David. S. So what do you think uh, to any plans to bring 5G? Do you see in the near future or do you see that? Yes, uh, you know, networks will going to let people to settle in in 4G and then after that move ahead or they want to just do it all together. Any any uh, insights on that, David? Uh, yeah, so uh, regarding 5G, uh, yeah. as I mentioned already, it's still in very, very early stage. Uh, so we as a Ruptella, we are thinking about it, but we are not yet planning to manufacture devices on 5G. Mm -hmm. uh, unless, of course, some specific maybe client needs, maybe some specific project and so on. Yeah. So we, are, of course, always are open to, to our clients, yeah. always discussing with them projects, uh, based uh, uh, projects and so on. 
so but yeah uh, for now we are not planning it i think it's too early because mm -hmm. 5g is still on, on on the early early start so let's wait for a few years uh, then we'll see then of course in the future we will move to 5g but i don't think that in near future what do you think or not? Vincent, if I, can, if I can make a comment on this, um, I really don't think for, for uh, track and trace or for, for what we are doing now, uh, 4G is needed. Let's be honest, for, uh, 5G I mean, is needed. 4G is more than enough for what we need. So yes, we discussed about other futures with, um, I don't know, video telematics, AI, object detection, things like that. Of course, uh, 5G will help. But for current situation, for what we are doing now, uh, I really don't think 4G is more than enough. David, as I think you can confirm this. I agree with you, actually, Razvan. 4G is enough powerful. But yeah, without further ado, um, I would like to move on to a, a topic that I think it's really important, considering that we have known each other as partners for such a long time. Our values, business values matches. So, so I would say equally, what it leads to, uh, in, in, in terms of your understanding, what leads to a successful collaboration? Razvan. I think you're mute, no, Razvan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, so for sure, the one of the most important thing is trust trust each other as partners, have somebody to rely on, uh, on when you have a problem, because uh, in every type of collaboration relation, there will be problems. The way that you are facing these problems is very important. It's not always about the money. It's not always about the margin. Uh, it's about the way we are, we are, um, um, we, ha you, we have support when, when something come, came up. Uh, we approach new markets. We, we went to Ruptela and said, okay, I'm approaching this market. Uh, you have more knowledge because you are, uh, you are working uh, worldwide. Uh, teach me how to do it. Uh, uh, I have clients there. How can I help the clients? Uh, and we received all the necessary information. And I think that's the most important thing. Uh, of course, uh, we need to have fair prices because if we don't have fair prices, we are not competitive on the market. Uh, but I honestly can say that we have fair prices. We don't have the smallest, but we have, don't have the, uh, the biggest prices. So um, at the end, it's all about the relation that you have with, with your partners and how you are fixing, uh, you are fixing problems. In, in 10 years, believe me, we stayed many hours in the middle of the night with, with uh, my team and I, David knows, we, we worked uh, a few years directly. Yeah, I heard a lot uh, of stories. In the days and the night. I heard a lot Sorry. of stories. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, some, in, in, in some years ago, um, Rotella uh, didn't have a too well uh, notification system put in place because they started some new developments, but they didn't need it because they had us. They had cargo track, which in five minutes of, of, of any incident, we were calling day or night. Or, and this is, this relation was built in, in years. And uh, I think that lead us to a successful collaboration till now. And um, uh, that's the key of success. To be honest with each other, with each other um, and that's the most important thing. I cannot agree more more with you because you know uh, business is not only about selling and buying or better rates or anything. It's all about uh, relationship. You know, it's all about trust, as you mentioned. And I think so. This is this plays a, a core of any any business terms and transparency, of course, because without transparency, uh, there exactly. is there is no way. There is no go back. You know. Um, so yes, um, thank you very much for sharing this uh, deep insights and thank you for your valued partnership. It is really, really appreciated from our side. We are here for, uh, of course, for you, but for anybody. And this is this is where uh, our main one of the main values that really stands is is in order to support, in order to help grow a business because your success is our success eventually, and that what brings us all together. So, so yes, uh, thank you for that. 
Um, then um, moving on to one of the also uh, crucial topic about the tendencies uh, that is going on in the telematics industry. And uh, would love to start from, from you, Razvan, again, uh, to know your point of view to what you take it, uh, take the current scenario and what you see as the future as well. Um, regarding tendencies, I'm, I'm pretty sure that the most on short term, uh, we will discuss about integrations. Uh, integrations of our systems with different kinds of systems, with different kinds of platforms, uh, even if you are talking about uh, toll system, about TMS, about different kinds of ARPs, because uh, we gather some very important information that will help other softwares, other type of platforms uh, to offer a full overview to the, to the fleet owner uh, in real time. That's the most, the most important thing. And that will be on the short term. We started, uh, we started this um, uh, uh, a few years ago already. Uh, and uh, there are more and more, more requests from, from, from our clients um, uh, with different kinds of APIs in some cases. In other cases, we need to develop hardware or software. Uh, so we need to adapt to their needs. Um, this will be the next step on short term. Uh, pass from simple track and trace to, to optimize solution. Um, on a longer term, uh, and here 5G will help us, of course, uh, I see video telematics. Uh, in my opinion, that's the next step. Uh, we need to have the eyes on the road. Uh, and together with this video telematics, we can discuss about object detection. Uh, even if you want to see how full is the, our trailer, how optimized the, the, are the goods um, um, uh, positioned into the trailer, uh, what's the productivity, what we can improve. Uh, I mean, to, to put the eyes of, of the dispatcher on the, on, on, the, on the road to have more information. Uh, of course, we can go, we can go uh, in the direction of AI for optimizing the routes. Uh, because taking into consideration only traffic uh, and some some small information, it's it won't be enough. Um, currently, most of the software that I saw are based on, on on some standard APIs that a few providers on the market are are, are using are providing. But uh, in the future, I uh, I really think that um, AI will 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 have an important role in optimizing the fleets. And uh, in the end, uh, increasing, maximizing the profits. Uh, of course, we need to, to, to see how things will go and how soon we'll arrive to this level. But uh, uh, I'm pretty sure that in, in short term, I mean, in a few years, two, three years, we'll see very, very important developments in this area. Great, thank you. And David, would you like to add up on, on these points that was once said? Share. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, Razvan, for for such a detailed shares. Also, yeah. Uh, yeah. What basically what also I can see from my perspective, uh, actually, at the moment during past few years, and I believe that in uh, upcoming years uh, we are still on the wave of uh, transport telematics tracking and overall real time transport uh, visibility tracking, uh, because uh, I remember myself, you know, working let's say four or five years uh, uh, before in Ruptela mm -hmm. and uh, you know friends were asking hey where are you working I was like oh we're Ruptela you know everyone were asking like oh it's logistics company no 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 I said we're you know manufacturing devices and it's not logistic company we're actually manufacturing for them and so on and uh, of course I have some friends who are working in logistics companies in the current companies and that time they were like oh so these devices yeah i know like some of our friends they having installed them they tracking fuel and everything you know uh, so like four years ago it was still uh, for example in lithuania it was still kind of new thing I, I can tell at the moment like every truck every vehicle every rental company car sharing solution everybody are using uh, real-time uh, tracking exactly. and it's just on the waves and i believe uh, during 2023 even maybe 2024 it will be i guess the highest peak of this popularity because it's just getting everywhere on the wave 
they just they, they put devices anywhere like we are now uh, getting uh, inquiries from the clients like to put it on uh, you know shopping carts in the in, in, in the shops and so on so like people people are trying to track everything and just to save money uh, they're using the eco drive solution a lot they're saving a lot of money there just by monitoring uh, driver behavior and so on so yeah I think it will be much more popular in upcoming years yeah so that's it from my side Perfect. Thank you very much for uh, sharing this. I also have a question um, that uh, that I got is, what do you think about the African market? And um, I know that there's a 2G network going on and then there will be 4G, it's going to take some time. So 3G will work or what do you think, David? Yeah, regarding uh, African market, yeah. uh, uh, so uh, I need to mute because I guess it's double sound. Yeah, sorry. So regarding African market, so yeah, they they were stuck long time in uh, 2G basically, uh, but now what can we see from tendencies and from trends that uh, they're straightly jumping to 4G? And it looks like they'll skip 3G uh, because in most parts there's still 2G working, but already 4G Cat1 and CatM1 even in big cities in in African countries are. Uh, getting deployed and I think they'll jump straight to 4G and uh, within a few years also Africa will be popular on 4G solutions. Okay. So it's basically adaptable altogether um, across globally. Okay, that's uh, that's that's very good thing. So it's overall going to be a standard which is going to be moving ahead. So Razvan, um, I have a very interesting question that just popped into my head. Um, what uh, are the plans for cargo track in 2023 where do you see uh cargo track where do you want uh yeah your vision basically um as i said we are doing a lot of integrations a lot of uh, we have a lot of special uh, projects on which we are uh, concentrating currently uh in which uh, we involve that uh, some of the uh things that i said earlier as uh, object detection and ai um we, we will use everything that we learned in telematics uh in order to develop some special solution from for 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 our clients uh this is in regarding what new projects uh, we, will, we will approach as an um, extension of of our our services covering new markets uh we will uh, we started this year a new new and a very interesting collaboration with um, with egypt uh and uh, we are we are we had we we started to, to understand the market we started to understand the needs there are uh, there and we will uh, we will uh, start to have clients there and extend through also to different kinds uh, different uh, countries in in europe uh -huh. that are the plans for 2023. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so, so I think so. There is a lot of information flowing around with this conversation. Uh, thank you very much for that. But um, for for you, David, um, regarding the components crisis that we were going through, you know, and it is still ongoing. How do you see uh, that this transition can actually, you know, how well prepared we need to be? Um, and how we can simplify the transition just because, you know, it will be a huge wave as I'm predicting as well. I'm thinking that it will be a huge wave, how the companies and us has to be prepared and how we can satisfy that need. Yeah. So regarding uh, component crisis, uh, more if you're asking Vincent. So yeah, uh, as you know, we prepared it uh, already. Our strategy basically almost two years ago when we analyzed market we saw the first trends when uh, that component crisis is coming up it's harder and harder to get some simple electronic components so of course we modified our devices uh, we put it new components to it and mm -hmm. uh, we put it components which uh, our suppliers are guaranteeing for us to 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 have good lead times and uh, uh, they give us guarantees we're also trusting them as as you know uh, our clients trusting us we're also trusting our suppliers this is one of the values of our companies yeah. uh, the trust 
Uh, yes, we prepared for it. Uh, we are ready now to deploy uh, basically any amount of devices that you need. We actually, with, with especially with this new 4G family, we are not facing any issues with, with this component crisis and we are ready. We are stacking also, of course, a little bit of our warehouses. We are waiting for these waves because still the waves will come up, you know, more or less country by country. You know, one yeah. country will shut down, <laughs> another country will shut down and so on. So yeah, we are ready for it. And uh, I saw actually the question somewhere in the chat uh, that what are the lead times? Are we re ready if uh, some clients will need those 4G devices? So yes, we are ready. Uh, just go ahead, uh, order it, and uh, you will get it uh, within one week or so. Adding to this topic, Razman, what? How do you see? Uh, this see? scenario of components crisis from your eyes any I really hope steps that we have taken to prepare <laughs> yourself or do you have any plans uh, I really hope it will end soon uh, you know a few years ago I mean last year I heard uh, it will end somewhere in summer after that summer in the beginning of this uh, next year yeah uh we need to adapt to it we we adapted uh, uh we adapted and we we uh in some cases we made the bigger stocks um, uh, just to 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 cover the the possibility to have uh, no devices uh to be honest we didn't confront any problem currently you have the devices yeah. Uh, we didn't have problems in which you couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, deliver the devices. Uh, maybe not always the quantity that we wanted, but we didn't confront uh, uh, with this. Regarding other peripherals that uh, that um, that we are using, uh, we we switch in some cases in the in uh, uh, between the providers, uh, but. Uh, we found the problem is the price on which we found yeah. this, this uh, because it's not the problem that you cannot find components you can find components but uh, not for yes. one euros but for, for 100 euros yeah. the same product so it's, it's not okay to say you cannot find okay, okay you can but somebody is making a very big uh, profit on this uh, if you you can find solutions in in some ways um, um, to be honest uh, this is the only thing that uh, the market will will uh, will somehow start find its way and and uh, it will stabilize uh, at a certain moment after all the games are played. No, absolutely. Um, and do you have any plans to expand your business to different market, considering that you have a, such a strong presence in the Europe itself and and more other countries capturing other countries in the Europe or across Europe. In, in Europe, uh, as I said in the beginning, you are already having clients in different kind of, uh, of uh, countries. So we are expanding, uh, not necessarily directly, but uh, uh, through our our clients there, uh, uh, we get more and more clients in different countries of Europe. We have teams that go uh, around the uh, whole around Europe to make installations and provide the uh, quality for our uh, for our clients. Uh, we had different kind of partnerships through Rutella or uh, through other partners in Europe, so we can cover cover installation all over Europe currently in a very short, uh, a very very short time. Uh, so yes, regarding Europe, this is this is our uh, this is our approach. Regarding other other parts uh, of the world. Uh, uh, we'll take it slowly by slowly because we want to provide, we want to understand those markets, we want to provide exactly the services that the clients need because honestly, they are very different uh, and I'm very sure Rutella has more experience in this, but it's a different approach, the market needs are very different and if you want to be client-oriented, to offer the best solution for the clients, you need to first very well understand the, 100%. the market. Yeah, I think so. it's a it's a major challenge in the current market to have a, a native language speaker. You know, um, we as well have similar sort of challenges that we face uh, because that has brings a different impression, different approach, and it helps to grow immensely. Definitely, it's a scarcity talent. You know, you need to either be somewhere based uh, yeah. in the country or otherwise it's hard to manage. No, guaranteed. It's a problem. 
different time exactly. zones. It's a problem of language. Uh, it's a problem of I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 to David in relation to this same question, what uh, uh, a point of view you got in terms of expansion and uh, and how we can relate it to the market situation. Yeah, so regarding ex expansion, I, I would I have the same actually opinion as as as, as Razvan mentioned already, and yeah, it's the market is expanding. It 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 goes uh, all over the world already. It's it's global thing, you know. But still, some countries are um, a bit uh, a bit a bit uh, behind. Let's say the market. Uh, they're still in early stage, but more or less like Europe, USA as uh, just skyrocketing also. Latin America maybe a bit slower. It's like you know the African side or or Asia with specific needs, but still uh, more and more countries they will switch to uh, 4G, 2G anyway will be shut down. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw some also one question in the chat uh, from Germany uh, was asking, do we have a maps or some uh, lists of uh, operators and so on of countries who will be shut down when? So yes, we have uh, some information. We can share it with you, of course. So you can just write uh, an email to, to our support or directly to me uh, via email uh, and I'll, I'll let you know those countries. But yeah, we have, as I mentioned, basically three three main dates, 2023, 2025 and 2028 are the main dates here. Yeah, nothing, nothing maybe to add from my side regarding this. Vincent, we can't hear you. So yes, uh, you know, there's a lot happening in the market. Um, thank you very much for Razvan and David, as you know, for uh, taking the time, sharing the information. Uh, but last uh, question, one of the last questions that popped into my head about uh, COVID. So this will be for you, Razvan. Um, how you have seen the changes in the yeah. market let's say for example pro covid during covid and post covid uh in our business uh, uh our solution helped during covid times because because uh you needed to know where your driver is where your goods are uh, we had a lot of requests when COVID started, uh, very urgent requests to install uh, many devices on different kind, on, on ambulances, on different kind of, of services, vital services, even from government, we had some requests then. Uh, so before I, on, or on the beginning of, uh, of COVID, uh, everybody somehow understood the need to know where the, their assets are. Uh, after everything uh, uh, started to, to end somehow, uh, these companies or these institutions that installed the, uh, the devices uh, understand now the need and now they understand that can, they, they discover something and now they, they understand that can do more things, optimizing the way their processes. Uh, and that was the positive thing. Uh, it was very difficult during COVID to make yeah. the installations. Indeed, we had a lot of challenges uh, to make the installation in Romania, uh, outside of Romania, all over Europe. We had it was it was difficult, um, but uh, uh, we managed to we managed to pass it. We understood uh, and we learned a lot of things from this. Uh, we made a lot of procedures, internal procedures that helped us improved our way uh, of working. And, um, uh, you know, this was the, the, the good yeah. thing uh, from, from everything that happened, because let's be optimistic. Let's see also the, the good parts from the tragic yeah. incident that, that it was. And, and now you see the, the business is uh, picking up exponentially, huge demands. Honestly, we didn't. We weren't affected by by in sales okay. by COVID, uh, uh, and we had increased uh, 20, 30, 40 percent each year um, in the last five years. So, we 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 we, are, we weren't influenced negatively by uh -huh. by COVID. Okay. Again, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I must request with all our uh, kind attendees if they have any other questions. 
that they can pop into our chat. We are able to answer. Um, it has time has just flown by. It's almost uh, 50 minutes. So this has been incredible. A lot of insights, a lot of information to process. Um, and so, so if we do not have any more questions, let me just quickly check. Um, I think so. We can say hasta la vista and uh, a Merry Christmas. Yeah, we have a question. We have a question uh, from Pierre for, for, for me, I think. Does Cargo Track use Trust yes. Track for its own? Sorry platform? about that. It uses Trust Track. It uses, you know, it uses Trust Track, but we have also our own solution for the personalized um, developments that we are doing. So it depends on the approach, but yes, we are using Trust Track. We, we know all the mm -hmm. details. Inside out of, of trust. Rate. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. So yes, um, I think so it's the time then. <laughs> if you do not have any more questions, um, I appreciate all of you again. Thank you very much for joining. Uh, it has been incredible. Uh, we are all open uh, for any other questions that you might have. So please do let us know uh, in case. If not, then I wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. And hopefully we'll be in, um, uh, in contact, in touch, and be working together in the future. So yes, take care and have a great afternoon or evening or morning. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.